Alberta is officially gearing up for a provincial election on May 29th, but the race effectively began weeks ago. This with both Daniel Smith's United Conservatives and Rachel Notley's New Democrats warning of a dystopian future if the other should win. Polls suggest that the battleground for the May 29th vote is clearly defined. UCP supporters seem generally focused on the economy and money issues, and EP supporters seem focused more on health, education and social programs. Well, joining us now to unpack the upcoming election and what's at stake for Alberta voters is Dr. Jeffrey Hale, a political scientist and professor at the University University of Lethbridge. Dr. Hale, welcome to Forum Daily. Good to have you. Good to be here. Now, uh, recent polls indicate that the Alberta UCP and NDP are locked in a dead heat or very close to it. But what kind of trends have you been seeing so far while considering that it is uh, quite early in this race? Uh, this is certainly expected to be a very close race. Uh, the uh, small town Alberta is by and large conservative. Edmonton is overwhelmingly NDP. And it's expected that the race will be decided in uh, 10 to 15 seats in suburban Edmonton and around the city of Calgary. And we know campaigning began even before the writ was dropped on Monday. So how does that set the tone and pace for the weeks ahead? Well, candidates, especially in close ridings, have been door knocking for up to a couple of months, at least some for longer. Uh, the, each party has been trying to frame the election uh, in its terms, so the Conservatives, uh, both by uh, using their incumbency to advance various policy positions and actions uh, on the grounds that uh, this gives Premier Smith the best opportunity to define herself practically for voters, and uh, the New Democrats uh, uh, attacking what this and the previous Kenny government have done. Uh, as well as trying to discredit Premier Smith uh, for all the comments she made during uh, her leadership candidacy and her years as a talk show host. So uh, the campaign has been going for some while. Mm -hmm. And we know Calgary is a key city that both leaders are eyeing. It's being called the real battleground here, as you mentioned. Uh, so where do the parties stand when it comes to one of the largest cities in the province? Well, each party is framing Calgary issues in its own broader context. So the, uh, cons uh, the UCP is emphasizing its investments in infrastructure. Uh, it's in, it's uh, emphasizing the money it has put into hospital expansion and other, other public services in the university through its infrastructure programs. Uh, and it's emphasizing uh, job creation and job diversification and economic diversification, uh, appealing to supporters largely in the private sector. The NDs, uh, the New Democrats, are promoting uh, the uh, funding expansion for public services, especially healthcare, which is a front of mind issue after the pandemic, uh, particularly given uh, uh, frequent doctor shortages, not just in small town and rural Alberta, but also in, in, in larger centers, uh, and uh, more investment in education. And they're also uh, talking about putting money into the conversion of uh, downtown office buildings in Calgary, which are uh, have huge vacancy rates, partly as, a, as uh, a reflection of the downturn in the oil sector in the last decade, uh, partly as a reflection of uh, commuting or working from home during the pandemic. Uh, and so these are two different approaches that play to each party's uh, emphasis or view of the public interest. And on that note, uh, as you mentioned, both parties uh, seem to be very close in this race. However, they're both focused on very different issues for Albertans. So uh, what does this say about the overall sentiment being felt in Alberta amid this race? Uh, just about a minute left here. Uh, there is no single overall sentiment. There are multiple constituencies. Uh, some are torn between uh, respective uh, fears of each party or each leader. Uh, some are oriented towards more basic uh, and more persistent interests, so whether on the public sector or the private sector. Uh, and some are ideologically driven, uh, which overlaps often overlaps with interests. So I don't think we have one set of elections. I think we have multiple local and sector-driven elections and uh, the party that manages to navigate these differences most effectively will come out victorious at the other end. Very tight race. Lots to keep our eyes on again. Dr. Hale, thank you again uh, for joining us on Forum Daily. My pleasure.